Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my best VR settings for the Fly-By-Wire A32NX. Using these settings gives me a seamless and smooth experience, as well as clarity and vibrance. If you want to know my other settings, you can see the video linked above. My intention of this video is to share my settings with you in order to help you dial in your own settings using mine as a starting point. These settings are all my personal preferences and they work really well for me, and I hope they work just as well for you. Before we get into the VR settings, I just want to show you this example of through the lens footage of me taking off in the 32NX. You can clearly see on the left that motion reprojection is enabled, and the amount of warping and artifacts here is considerable. This is a prime example of why I never use motion reprojection. And hopefully using my settings will stop you from having to use it too. So here we are in the VR settings. First you can see I've got the render scaling set at 85. The main reason I've got it set to 85 is because it gives me a bit of headroom in terms of performance. These larger aircraft, especially the airliners, are much more complex and process heavy. Therefore, the main setting I pull down for this aircraft is the render scaling. You can see I've got the anti-lasing set to TAA and the terrain level of detail is set to 100. And the reason why I've set this to 100 is because the aircraft is a real performance hog. The terrain vector data, however, is set at ultra. The buildings are set at medium and the trees are set at medium too. This way I still get enough detail and it enables the aircraft to run smoothly. I've got grass and bushes set to high, and objects level of detail are set to 105. It's slightly higher than the terrain level of detail. The reason why I've set this at 105 is because I notice that sometimes the objects level of detail in the distance when I'm flying the airliners does appear a bit blurry. Therefore I just bump it up slightly to 105. This way it doesn't hit performance, and gives me that extra bit of clarity. Volumetric clouds I've set at high just because they're so process heavy that I don't want it to interfere with the smoothness of the flight. Texture resolution is set to ultra. I find that this setting affects others, including the volumetric clouds. And I notice it sometimes helps to limit the pixelation in the clouds. And the anisotropic filtering is set to 16 times. Texture supersampling is set to 8 times 8 and texture synthesis is set to high. I still have this setting set at high just to try and help with the visuals on the textures. Water waves is set to high since water is such an important feature to me. Shadow maps is set to 1024 and terrain shadows are set to 512. I have these set quite low just because I'm flying at a higher altitude most of the time so I don't think these are quite as noticeable. Contact shadows are set at ultra I have the windshield effect set to medium, just because I feel that like this setting gives me enough atmosphere in the cockpit. I've turned ambient occlusion off. The main reason for this is just based on the performance. With some aircraft I don't think this setting is worth using, just because it takes such a hit on performance. I've got reflection set to high because I feel like this really helps those textures and the water, so I've not put that down too much. Light shafts are turned off, and bloom is turned off. Because we get so much sunlight shining into the cockpit, I don't feel that these two settings are really worth it, and it's always good to save on performance. And the last setting, glass cockpit refresh rate, is set to high. This is pretty much aligned with the reflection setting, which I think sometimes works together with the glass cockpit refresh rate. So hopefully using these settings with this aircraft will help you get a smooth and seamless performance in VR without using motion reprojection. Please let me know in the comments if these settings have helped you out or not. Again, I recommend using them as a starting point for your own system, and hopefully it'll help you get the best performance possible. Anyway guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed the content. Please like and subscribe if you did. And I'm looking forward to the imminent update 6 next week. In the meantime, everyone take care and stay safe.